so many requests. Powder, I keep saying powder. Nearly an NC20, powered by skincare. Blah. Happy birthday to me, shake it up. Hi, I'm Mallory Brooke, makeup artist and content creator here on YouTube, and today I'm reviewing the new and exciting MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation. I got so many requests, for real, to review this foundation, so I purchased it from MAC's website, and I have a couple of notes about that here in a second, and I'm excited to try it. It just came in, but I also have the MAC Studio Fix fluid, the like original, I guess, two totally different foundations. But I will be touching on some comparisons today, but not a full comparison because I will be doing a foundation face-off with both of these to see the similarities as well as the differences. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that video popping up in your feed. This is obviously a classic MAC foundation. And this is brand new. The MAC Studio Fix Fluid original foundation is $42, Right now it's on sale for $29.50. If you do like this foundation, you can get it on sale right now on MAC's website. And the MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powder, powder, I keep saying powder, powered foundation is $46. You get one fluid ounce in each. The MAC Studio Fluid Foundation does have an SPF, just so you know, and this one does not. Now let's get into the full review. I love that this foundation actually comes with a little pump, so we'll see how well I like it. Now, I am normally an NC15 in MAC foundations, and when I went to purchase it, I saw it in the swatches. I'll pop, I'll pop that up on the screen. I saw the NC15 did exist in the swatches. However, it did did not exist when I went to do the drop down. It's not even like it was sold out. I like couldn't purchase it. So I purchased the sh shade NC 14.5. So we will see how this does with my skin tone. And it's funny because then the uh, MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation is an NC15 and NC15 in this is nearly an NC20. That's always been kind of an outlier with MAC's foundations for me. Just some bullet points about this foundation before we go ahead and apply. It is supposed to be a 24 hour hydrating wear foundation. So we will be putting this to the test. We will be seeing this in natural daylight as well as after a workout, today's leg day. So they they say that this is sweat resistant, crease proof, like it lasts throughout the day. So we will be putting that to the test. I will show you that update in natural lighting and we will see how well this wears at the very end of the night. No filters. I never use filters on this channel. So give this video a like if you do like makeup reviews with no filters on them. Now the MAC Studio Radiance Foundation is supposed to be powered by skincare. There's hyaluronic acid in there. It is supposed to give you a nice kind of hydrated look and feel. They say that there is 32 skincare ingredients in here. That seems like a lot. That seems like this might just be skincare and 10% of it is hyaluronic acid. I wanna take a quick break and thank today's sponsor, Halara. Halara is an athletic fashion brand Brand that offers really soft, comfy, cozy clothing that is super high quality. I've been working out in these leggings, like hardcore. And if you guys know how I work out, you know it's hardcore. It is not, uh, it's not light. So we put these leggings to the test. Quality is there. The performance is there. They do not slide around the body. The first pair of leggings I wanna talk about are the Cloudful 3.0s with this amazing, crisscross front, I love that. You have the support but style there, but what's so cool about this fabric is it's like you're wearing nothing. Imagine Lululemon Align leggings, but a third of the cost. So Halara actually developed this fabric themselves to be a 24 seven wear legging. One of their goals was to make it not only workout friendly, but travel friendly. These next leggings are terraining leggings and they are high waisted, also have pockets. They're a little bit thicker of a fabric. So if you are lifting heavy or you are actually cycling, say you have spin class and you don't want uh, thinner fabrics on your legs, these are perfect for that. Again, pockets, no crisscross waist, but you get a lot of tummy control as well as a very flattering back. All right, the next pair of pants, because I placed the order myself, I ordered a size too big in these corduroy pants, but honestly, the bagginess is kind of giving me 90s vibes, so I'm still gonna wear them, plus there's belt loops so I can wear a belt, 
But like I said, I'm an extra small on everything, but these corduroy pants, I ordered a small because they look like they might fit smaller, but it definitely taught me that Halara pants in the, you can look at their sizing chart, whatever size you are in their leggings, you're gonna be that size across the board. So I love that their uh, sizing is actually very consistent. Next, I ordered these really soft, stretchy jeans. These are black and they are flares. And I love how stretchy they are, but they don't stretch out during the day. I have other jeans that are kind of like this type of stretchy fabric mixed with like a denim fabric. They are not jeggings, okay? They don't feel like a legging, but look like jeans. They are a stretchy denim, which I absolutely love. The next pair of denim I wanna show you are these, are these light wash denim with a crisscross front, very flared, real pockets. They so look like the 70s, and I absolutely love the 70s. It's my favorite era of fashion and hair and makeup. So I absolutely love that there's a lot of 70s detail. These are super, super flattering, and again, an extra small, very very consistent in sizing and they don't stretch out during the day. Last but not least, I had to order these, okay? They are a cargo pant. Again, that very nice, hefty weight stretchy denim. I love my denim to have a weight to it. It feels more luxe and all of these pairs of pants definitely have a weight to them. They come with real pockets, very 90s, very cool real pockets so you could throw your tools in there you know what i mean like a carpenter anyway i love it they're very flattering even though they are looser and you have this really nice stretchy band that is reinforced so you got a little tummy control as well as it won't stretch out during the day, but look at how stretchy it is. Thank you so much, Halara, for sponsoring today's video. I love that they offer a wide variety of clothing because you can find things that fit you and your style and you can get 15% off with my code Mallory15 and you can shop all the links below in the description box. Ordering process is super simple, shipping is so fast, and I am so happy to have Halar as a sponsor today. Now let's get back into the video. It is supposed to be safe for sensitive skin if you are new to my channel. Hi, hello, welcome, we're so happy you're here. But I do have dry, sensitive, breakout prone skin, so I'm excited to see if this foundation does in fact break me out because the Studio Fix Fluid definitely breaks me out. MAC claims that this foundation strengthens your skin barrier over time, I just, who knows? Truly, a lot of foundations in the past few years have claimed that kind of outrageous claim. So I don't know if that's true. I'd really just wanna see if this lasts all day, gives me a nice finish and actually feels hydrating. And I hope NC 14.5 will match my skin tone. This says it will not cake, it will not crease. And there are 48 shades in the line. I do really appreciate Max shade ranges, but they are a makeup artist brand. That's how they started out was for makeup artists. So you had mixing mediums. You could really, you know, create your entire kit with just MAC products in general and you're good to go. So I do appreciate the shade range on this. However, I hope this shade matches me. Now MAC recommend, blah. now MAC recommends to use their 170S brush, which is fortunately for me, very similar to the Gabby Rose Face Master brush. This brush is so soft and it's supposed to be a brush and sponge in one basically. And it really actually performs that way. So we're gonna be using this because it's very similar to the brush they offer. So if you have something similar that's dense, soft, and can really you know, buff in the product, then that's great. I almost forgot, I ordered the MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur Weightless Loose Powder. I will not be uh, setting my entire face with this. I will just be setting my concealer with this because I wanna see how the foundation performs on its own, but we will be using this to set our under eyes because I felt like when I was reading about it that it would be great for someone who is 35 now, that's, yep, mm -hmm. happy birthday to me, uh, who has fine lines, you know, and wrinkles under their eyes. So I want to see how this sets concealer. It says it provides a photo friendly matte finish with a 3D blurring effect. So whatever that means, we shall see. Just like in every foundation review video, I will be applying one side with a brush, the face master on one side, and then a beauty blender, barely damp, okay? You shouldn't squeeze your beauty blender and water come out. It should be barely damp that way. It just presses the product into the skin and does not dilute the coverage. 
All right, this foundation says to shake it. So we're gonna shake it up. I can hear it shaking around. All right, that looks a little light. So let's go ahead and buff this in. I'm gonna do the right side with the Gabby Rose Face Master. Now this is supposed to have medium coverage and a natural finish. I also saw that there's like jojoba oil in there. It's supposed to make the skin look plumper and all this good stuff. You know, sometimes that comes down to how much light the actual product reflects and it really has nothing to do with like, you know, the actual plumping effect. However, hyaluronic acid does collect moisture that exists in your skin already and brings it to the surface for a plumping effect. So that's probably where they are getting that claim from. Now it says the coverage is buildable. I feel like this is pretty lightweight. I would compare it to the lightweight feeling of the Laura Mercier Flawless Weightless Foundation. And I have a full review on that if you would like to see that. I think NC 14.5 is a good match. It's a little light, like you can see my skin tone here, but there is some redness it's covering. So it's kind of hard to tell. We will see. It's not supposed to oxidize or anything like that. There's no fragrance and it's buffing into the skin really nicely. That's what I love about this brush is you can, you know, buff in and then you can tap to get more of like a sponge feel to press the product in. So you know how sometimes when you use a foundation brush to apply your foundation, you can take the face master and after buffing it in, then go in and press in with the face master instead of going in with a sponge. And it does act like a sponge. It's one of the most incredible foundation brushes I've ever used because I don't like foundation brushes. So this is a testament to how good that product is, how good the brush is. All right, so this is the side with the brush side and this foundation's pretty dang good, which is good because since they're discontinuing one of my all time favorite foundations over at MAC, the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation, which is devastating, I don't understand. It's probably just because there's more hypeable products, but it was one of the most incredible foundations I had ever used. It lasted, it photographed well. When I was on Glam Masters, MAC was one of our sponsors for the show for Kim Kardashian's Glam Masters. And MAC was one of our sponsors, like I said, and that's the foundation I chose to use on my model immediately. I saw it and I was like, okay, yes, thank God this foundation is here because it's really friendly with a lot of skin types. My model had like a normal, normal, I would say normal to combo skin type if I remember correctly. So that was kind of nice to work with. All right, I'm definitely seeing that the sponge side gave me way Way more of a glow and by the way no primer was used so it's just my regular skincare which is currently the versed sunday morning serum with the versed gel moisturizer with walita skin food as my eye cream nothing else wow whoa actually take a look at this really quickly it looks like a totally different foundation on either side of my face well, that's surprising. I wonder if it's gonna settle down differently. It looks beautiful applied with a sponge. I feel like I almost got more coverage with my beauty blender. Okay, whoa, comment right now. Is it just me and my glaucoma seeing this difference? This is the side with the brush. This is the side with the sponge. Honey, the sides look very different. Let me know your thoughts right now and what you see maybe that I can't see right now. Okay, like I can literally see the line down the center of my face of like glow and then no glow. Applied beautifully with both application processes. So I'm gonna go ahead, get to the point where I'm applying my concealer Sealer. We'll be back to test out the new MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur Weightless Loose Powder in the shade Light, which is a fair shade with beige neutral undertones. All right, it's time to set my concealer and I used my MAC Studio Finish Concealer that does have SPF in it, SPF 35, doesn't break me out. In NC10, that's I like my under eyes a little lighter than the rest of my face for some dimension lift brightness because I do struggle with dark circles. Now it's time to set my concealer area. Oh, it comes with a little thing, a little doodad. Okay, so we have the opening. That feels kind of, feels like you could tear it off. Honestly, it feels a little disposable. Whoop. Okay, then we have a little netting deal. It kind of reminds me back in the day when the Pat McGrath powders came out. You know, I was gonna set this with the Gabby Rose Pro O2 because it's kind of like perfect for underneath the eyes, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this because I do like little puffs to set and press and slightly bake my under eyes. So this is the shade Light. 
So let's go ahead and press and set my concealer here. Okay, so light is definitely, I don't know if I would call that beige. I think that I would call that yellow, which is fine. I prefer my under eye products to be a little peachy, pinky, and even beigey. But this one is a little bit yellow. Let's give it a second though. I actually really like this little puff. I'm gonna keep this in there. All right, this is the side that's set with the new MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur. Let me look up close. It does blur the pores. I'm just setting right where I've applied concealer and I do do the triangle method because I like a lift. Definitely blurred my pores. Wow, okay. Let's do the other side. And I like that you can just kind of press and you kind of have a decent amount of control over the amount of product that comes out. So let's press this in. And like I said, I'm only setting where I've applied concealer, which is this little triangle shape. So keep that in mind. When we do go outside for our natural light shot, where is set with powder and where is not. And I will remind you guys. And plus you can use the edge of the powder puffs to kind of blend out any creasing that you have underneath your lower lash line, which once you hit your in your 30s, girl, especially mid 30s, the eyes get wrinkly. I feel blurred, set, and perfected. I just wonder what this is gonna look like over the day. But so far, that's a really nice, Okay, I'm gonna let that set and not smile because girl, we're gonna see them fine lines real quick. All right, so far I do like the powder. I don't like that this feels flimsy and disposable, but that's all right. I'm gonna just go ahead and close that up. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes and I feel like I'm still getting more light reflection on the sponge side application. And then on the right side is the brush, which I feel like is definitely satin, if not a matte finish. So we'll see how this goes. Once I apply the rest of my makeup, I'm not seeing any oxidizing happening, so. I'm gonna apply the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, we are back. I applied the rest of my makeup and if you want to know what that is, I will have everything that I used and mentioned in order of use in the info box below. And yes, there are affiliate links if I can help it because this is what I do for a living. So when you shop my links, I make a small commission and you actually actively help support this channel. So all of that will be listed below, but I've had this on my face now for about an hour. I applied the rest of my makeup. I filmed some short form content for my other social medias. So my thoughts are the MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation in the shade NC 14.5, I feel like is a good match. But what I'm most impressed with is the finish and how smooth my skin looks. I feel like the Studio Fix Pro Set in Blur Powder set my concealer beautifully. I'm very happy with both products, but this, it, it has only been an hour. So we're about to go see what this looks like out in natural light because products look very different when it comes to studio lighting versus natural lighting. So if you're someone who is like, okay, Mallory Light, it and then you get in your car and you look like a crazy person, I don't wanna do that to you. So I wanna show you what this looks like in natural light after a workout and the end of the night so you can get an idea of how these products might wear for you if we have similar skin types. I do feel like the brush side gave me a true matte finish and then the sponge side is giving me more of almost a natural finish with a tad bit of glow in there. I could almost say this is a glowy finish. I love both sides. It's crazy to me the difference in the finishes of the applications, but I feel like my pores are blurred where I set the powder. No creasing has happened and I didn't even bake today. And I love to bake to ensure that my concealer stays where it's at, that my uh, other concealers don't crease because I do use a lot of product under my eyes to cover and correct my dark circles. So I feel like that is looking very beautiful. I'm over overall super happy with this foundation and the powder. So let's get into some natural daylight and see if we're just as happy with the finish as we are out there. And this has not oxidized. So that is also, there goes my curling iron that was very hot. Let's see what this looks like in natural daylight. It hasn't oxidized. I'm very pleased with it. Let's go.
All right, you guys, it is currently almost four o'clock. So I've had this foundation on all day and filmed a whole other video as well as some, like I said, I already said this short form content, <gasps> but I do feel like the powder's too dark for me. So I think she's gonna go back. I saw that they have a translucent. I didn't see that option when I placed my order. I just feel like it's too dark for the concealer and it's like just looks like yellow patches but as far as the finish of the powder the blurring of the powder and all that i really do like the foundation this is natural light i feel like is so pretty okay this is where i'm usually like super dry it's just picking up on some texture girl i'm 35 now happy birthday to me i'm 35 i have texture issues also here are my pores i feel like they look nice i don't feel like they're enhanced oh we got a blemish don't look at it that's kind of gross but oh well this is the side of the sponge this is the side of the brush. I feel like over time, the finish ended up being just about the same. I didn't wear highlighter today because when I applied this foundation and saw that the sides were very different when it came to the finish, I wanted to see the exact difference or how it would be the same. And I'm getting bug bites right and left. Ugh. And I feel like it ended up being the same. So I'm glad I didn't wear highlighter, no highlighter today. So sponge side, brush side. Let me know what you guys think right now in the comments. I feel like it's been lasting well. I have been inside. I'm about to eat a really late lunch and then get leg day in. So the next time I see you, I will be uh, very sweaty. <laughs> so we'll see if this lasts uh, as long as it says, not 24 hours, I wash my face. Please wash your makeup off, okay? Last looks. I think she looks good. Powder deepened my under eyes, but what can we do? All right, I'll see you guys later. All right, you guys, it is currently 7.25, so it's a little dark. We can't really see what we normally can out here, but other than me dripping sweat, I think that this foundation looks, oh, there's that blemish. I think this foundation looks great. I think it's beautiful. Again, this is the sponge side. This is the brush side. So go ahead and let me know what you think right now. Which side? is your fave. I think both pretty much settled down the same. This side is a little bit glowier. Again, I did not apply any type of highlighter so we could see the finish on this true. And this side is a little bit more matte. Sponge, brush. What side do you prefer? Do you see that big of a difference? The sun is setting, it's only 7.30. When were we warned? <laughs> That's my new bird bath. Okay, I'm gonna go inside let my face settle and I will see you guys at the end of the night probably with a little better quality just because it's so dark out here. I think NC 14.5 ended up being a match. We can't really see anything out here can we? Other than I need to shave my mustache. <laughs> All right. Hi, hello. It is the end of the night. So it is time for our end of the day wrap up on the MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation. I still almost said powdered. What is, it is what it is. So I cannot believe throughout the day how the different applications were. I think this is the most outstanding out of all of the foundation reviews that I have done and where most of my foundation reviews, I do different application processes to show you what they look like on each side of my face, sometimes three different ones and it's different on my forehead. But I have to say, I feel like this one not only looks good on both sides, but looks very different in finish on both sides. So I've had this foundation on now for a little over 10 hours and it wore beautifully. I'm not noticing a breakout. This blemish was already there, but look at the difference. Again, no highlighter on, no setting powder all over my face, no setting spray, no primer. This is what the foundation did on its own. We'll discuss how I feel about the powder here in a second, but the sponge side is so much glowier. 
then the brush side. So it's really kind of cool. It's kind of like, man, I really like this foundation. I like that it wears all day long. I like that it makes my skin look healthy and it really corrects any type of uh, discoloration and covers blemishes and, and corrects all that kind of stuff. Plus it's lightweight, but hmm, today I want it to be glowy or hmm, today I want it to be a more matte finish. Go in with a brush. And then if you want a glowy finish, go in with the beauty blender. I think it's incredible. Let's go ahead and zoom in and talk details. I mean, I just think it's so cool. So after, you know, 10 plus hours of wear, this is what we're looking at. I think it looks great. I think it looks fresh. I think that it looks like my skin is perfected. I have no complaints whatsoever. I don't feel like it really picked up on any dryness. This is a fuzz that's stuck in my brow. I would say my forehead looks a little texturized. I talked about that outside, but I did just turn 35. So I'm a human being with pores and skin things. You know what I mean? So overall, I really like this foundation. I'm gonna keep it. I think this is a really good match for me. Let me know if you are going to try it or you've already tried the Studio Radiance. I know a lot of you who requested this review have tried it before and you have a similar, I thought my mic was going out, a similar skin type to me and you loved it. So I'm absolutely a fan. I love it. All right, let's talk about the MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur. I would say if you are anything below an NC20, this is going in, the, the shade light is going to deepen and darken anything on your face. So if I were to have set my entire face with the shade light, I think it would have darkened the foundation because it darkened the NC10 concealer that I put, applied. And I would say it's now, well, like, a little darker than NC15 under my eyes. So I will be exchanging the light for the translucent because I do really like the finish of this powder. I like that it blurred. I like that it stayed where I put it. It didn't break up. It helped my concealer stay set in place and overall smooth uh, any crepiness. Like I'm 35. That sounds so weird to me. I'm 35. Look at these under eye uh, fine lines. Okay, they're there, but they're looking like they had some good sleep. So I really like the powder. I just need a different shade. Let me know if you've tried the powder as well. Anyway, love this. I will be doing a foundation face off with the MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation here in just a little bit. I almost forgot to show you the difference in these shades. So like I said, I'm gonna do a foundation face off where I face off with two foundations, one foundation on one side, one foundation on the other, but I wanna show you how dark this NC15 is, okay? I just don't quite understand why the, it's almost like a peach undertone with the Studio Fix Plus. I've always had that problem. And then you have MAC Studio Radiance. However, this is a 14.5, but let me just compare. There is the difference. NC15 should not be right here that dark. This is NC14.5. If anything, I feel like this NC14.5 is technically an NC15 when I look at it. So now we're going crazy, y'all. Here's, I'm gonna waste some really great product. Oh my God, actually, now that I'm looking at it, this is MAC Pro Long Wear Nourishing Waterproof. This is NC15 in the MAC Pro Long Wear Waterproof. So we've got Studio Fix Plus Fix Fluid Foundation in NC15. In the center is the new Studio Radiance in 14.5. And then we have down here, Pro MAC Pro Long Wear Waterproof Nourishing Foundation in NC15. What the heck? Now that I'm looking at it, uh, NC 14.5 almost looks darker than the NC 15. Well, this is blowing my mind. I hope this comparison helped you. They're all different shades. And here I was thinking that Mac was pretty consistent with their color, their color range. Anyway, that's insane. But NC 14.5, I would say is definitely my match right now. And I am not self tanned or sun tanned or anything. So if you are an NC 15, then I think this shade would work for you. But then like, what? Okay, you guys are gonna have to let me know your thoughts. I gotta wrap this up. Very different shades. Again, NC15, NC14.5, and NC15 again. 
all different shades. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoy my foundation reviews and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you in this beautiful, wonderful, positive and honest community. Um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. This is like absolutely blowing my mind right now. Anyway, love the studio radiance. Good night. Happy birthday to me. All right.